Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a clutch fluid replacement. Now, um, it's probably well overdue. I've had this bike um, a little over 12 months now, um, coming up to 13 months. Um, and I haven't done it since I've owned it. Uh, Lord only knows when it was last done. Um, so, uh, I would expect it to be um, in a pretty um, minging state. I bet it's really, really dark and uh, pretty horrible. So it's a fairly straightforward task. Um, one thing that we will need is a few, uh, to get a few tools together, what I'll do, I'll run through those. Um, what we'll need, 10 mil spanner, so that we can um, undo the bleed nipple, that's 10 mil. Um, JIS screwdriver, now, um, JIS screwdrivers are specifically for um, undoing the screws on Japanese uh, vehicles. Uh, I think it's. I think it stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. I would have to check that. Um, but uh, they they fit the screw heads perfectly. Now we need to remove the two screws from the top of the uh, clutch reservoir, and uh, we're going to use a JIS screwdriver not to do that. If you try and do it with a Phillips, a Phillips does not fit into JIS screw heads uh, correctly, and all you'll end up doing is chewing it up, marring it up, and uh, it'll be good for nothing. You'll end up having to replace the screws. So I would recommend. Investing in a set of JAS screwdrivers, um, it will save you a, a world of pain in the long run. Throw that over there. Right. Um, the other thing that we're going to use is a little syringe. What I'm going to do, once I've got the cap off, I'm going to suck the old fluid out uh, and then uh, get rid of it. Um, it. You can bleed it all the way out, but it's, it's just as easy to do it this way. Uh, or I prefer to do it that way anyway. So we'll use that for that. And the other thing I've got is a um, a little uh, hand vacuum pump. As you can see, it creates a vacuum when you pump it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that to um, bleed it. Now, these are really, really cheap. You pick these up on eBay for hardly any money whatsoever. They, they, they are well worth having in your in your in your uh, toolkit uh, for jobs such as this. You can use um, obviously there, there are other methods that people can employ. You can pump it, but to be perfectly honest with you, um, when you're trying to bleed a clutch, the pumping uh, of the lever method can be a little bit problematic, and this is a much more uh, a much more uh, what's the word I'm looking for a much easier way to do it. Um, obviously, if you've got a uh, if you've got a full size compressor, you can use that with a vacuum uh, bleeder as well. I do have one, but not everyone's got one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cheap tool such as this. Um, that way, um, you can see uh, how you know what kind of a, a cheap tool that you can use in order to do this job. So uh, let's uh, set about uh, doing the job, and uh, welcome to the channel. Right then, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to assemble the tool. Um, this little uh, cap's just a twist off. Put one. There, there comes two of these little hoses in the kit. Stick one of them on there, just like that. And then one of them will go on there. And the other one, another little one, on there and pop it on there right that end there will be going on to here once we uh, once we get to that point this is the bleed nipple just there what we'll be doing just putting that on there and ooh, actually i've got i've even got a correct adapter so push that on there and push that under the bleed nipple. It's quite a tight fit, that one. But that's a good thing. Okay, so that's all good to go for now. Right, Right then, next thing we're gonna do, using the JAS screwdriver, is just take the screws out. Okay. 
and then what we'll do is pop the bars up so that the uh, reservoir sits level pop the screws to one side where they're not going to get lost and then just to be safe what we're going to do stick plenty of this around the bike because as everybody knows brake fluid is highly corrosive to paint and whilst I don't pay you know a massive amount of attention to the paint on this bike I don't want it being stripped off by brake fluid so what we'll do next is annoyingly the uh... right okay the uh, the mod the control module for my heat grips is in the way. Uh, I didn't realise that actually. To be fair, when I uh, when I started, but what I'll do is I'll crack them off. It's just a couple of eight mil bolts. Just enough to move it out of the way. And there we go. So there's the cover off. You've got a plastic spacer, and then under that, there'll be a rubber gasket. Okay, there's the spacer. And what I'll do, I'll get another bit of tissue because this gasket will be bogging. gasket now if you look inside that brake fluid is absolutely stinking or clutch fluid should I say it's absolutely stinking it should be quite a clear color uh, kind of like a light straw I guess it's probably the best way to describe it but that's stinking so it's been in here a little while so I think what we're going to achieve here is uh, you know it's going to be beneficial to the running of the bike so okay then in fact, it actually smells quite, actually smells quite disgusting as well. So, little, um, this is like a little medical uh, syringe. The, the missus keeps these around for, for, we've had these for years from, you know, giving the medicine to the kids and whatever. So we've, uh, we kept them all older than because they're perfect for this kind of a job. So just pop it in the fluid and suck it up. Put it into a little drip pan. I'll have to do it a couple of times. I do have a bigger one, a bigger syringe that I use from the fork oil, but I don't really want to. I don't really want to contaminate it with brake fluid. So I'd rather. I'd rather just do this like this. And what we'll do, we'll get it all out the reservoir. We'll top it up with clean fluid and then we'll draw it through until we've got nice clean fluid in the pipes. And there we go. There's a little bit left in there, but that, you know, it'll work its way out um, as, we, uh, as we draw fluid through. Okay then. Next thing we need to do is top up the reservoir. Okay then, so in my, in my jug, nice clean brake fluid. That's what it should look like, not like the stinking stuff that came out the reservoir. So what we'll do is just slowly top the reservoir up. Don't kick the arse out of it because you don't want it overflowing. Just Put enough in there that it's not going to instantly disappear out of the reservoir the second you open the uh, bleed nipple. Right, okay, let's put this cap back on. Right then, next step is we've got a 10mm spanner on the bleed nipple. What we're going to do, 
pop pop the end over the top and then what we're going to do is pump away with the hand with a little hand pump just to build up some pressure then if we keep an eye on this pipe here what we should see we should if everything's working correctly is we should see fluid come out and there we go and what we'll do we'll keep the pressure up and open the bleed valve a little bit more what I need to do just keep an eye on the reservoir keep pumping keep pumping it out until such time as nice clean fluid starts to come out what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to lock it off lock it off there just top up the reservoir what you basically need to do is just be mindful of the reservoir um, draining too quickly because if it does you're effectively going to have to start all over again because the second the uh, the port in the middle of the reservoir is um, open to the air you'll be sucking air into the system and you'll have to start all over so just keep Show you mop up any spillage. I did dribble a little bit there, so I'll just clean that up. Okay, and there you can see the horrible stinking stuff that's coming out. So let's hold up the pressure again. What I like to do is just keep my finger on top of that just to make sure that it's all you know, it's not going to come off and Affect the seal, keep the pressure on. You can see the fluid coming through. Keeping an eye on the reservoir again. Yeah, again. Still getting the old stuff around now. You can see this is quite clean. So, what I'm going to do now is lock it off. Okay, check the level, top it up. Again, spilled a little bit there, so I'll mop that up quickly. What ends up on the paintwork. And just give the clutch a quick test. And that feels quite nice. Feels like we've got a decent amount of pressure at the lever. Okay, so we're in gear. There we are. Let go of the clutch and I can't rotate it. There we are. So we know that the clutch is still working because when I pull the clutch in, I'm able to turn the wheel. If I let go of the clutch, I can't turn the wheel. So yeah, that's the uh, the clutch. Uh, the clutch bled out, brand new fluid in there. Um, all I need to do is just double check the level and through the little sight glass here you can see the mark the mark on the housing and the level inside the window is bang on level i don't know whether you can make that on the camera but the level of the fluid is bang on level with this mark here and that's where we want it to be so yeah job done all i need to do now is first things first is refit the rubber Gasket. Refit the plastic spacer. And then the top cap. And then 
fit the two screws. What I'm going to do, because it's quite awkward to get into the screws because of the screen. I know some people actually do move the screens in order to do this, but I don't, I've never felt the need. Let's just hold on to it and give it a good bit of pressure and move it to one side. You can get enough purchase on it. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so that's nicely sealed up. All I need to do now is just tighten the bolts because obviously I had to do them, undo them to move the uh, heat controller out of the way, which is why the whole thing's moving. So, let's get my uh, spanner and just nip them back up. about it there we go they're nice and tight everything's all good yeah good clutch good clutch so there we go um, and looking at the fluid in the window and this reservoir now the fluid in the clutch reservoir compared to the color of the fluid in the brake reservoir you can see it's a lot lighter than that so um, I think the brakes will uh, the brake fluid will require a change uh, before long, so uh, stand by for a video on that and I will, uh, I will get one out very, very shortly. Okay, so, fairly simple task. Uh, let's pop the uh, cap back on the lead nipple. Yeah, there we go. Not a difficult task, anybody can do this at home. Following those instructions, you will not go wrong. Um, there are other ways of doing it. Obviously, people there are people that prefer to use the old fashioned method with a jar and a bit of, um, a bit of tubing, you know, like you do with car brakes. It works. Um, sometimes you can have difficulty with uh, with clutches as well, though, because um, just getting the pressure up in the clutch system in order to be able to bleed it can sometimes be problematic. This I find to be foolproof, and for the price of this tool, um, it's 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 ludicrous not having one in your, in your toolkit. Pick one up, put it in your garage, pull it out for jobs like this, and you won't go wrong. Okay, that is my top tip. Right then, guys. Uh, hopefully, you found this video uh, useful. If you did, don't forget to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Um, when you subscribe, it really does help the channel out. Okay, please, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you all again for the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.